<clears throat> okay, uh, very good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our class. And uh, in this uh, uh, class, uh, microcomputers, we are basically going to learn about the uh, uh, a very uh, uh, rough overview about uh, how this uh, uh, computers, uh, microcontrollers, and uh, microcomputers actually work. And at the moment, uh, many of us seems that uh, we have a very uh, vague idea of uh, what is uh, uh, microcomputers and what is microcontrollers. But uh, for those who are doing uh, electronics engineering and uh, to a certain extent, a B tech, uh, this uh, this elements will be uh, very important for your future. So. Uh, what you're going to achieve is that uh, after this uh, unit, we're going to have a very uh, rough overview. At least we can explain uh, roughly how uh, microcomputers, you know, what are they, how they work, you know, uh, and uh, we have a, a, a more in-depth picture of uh, what uh, microcomputers are. Okay, the uh, unit code is uh, uh, 2003, CMP 2003. Uh, two lecturers will be uh, in charge of this unit. Uh, me, myself, will be in charge of the lecture and the tutorials. Um, Dr. Filbert, uh, uh, let's welcome uh, Dr. Filbert. Uh, I want to thank him for helping out uh, with the uh, collaborate. Uh, Dr. Filbert will be uh, uh, doing the, uh, the labs. So uh, Dr. Filbert is very experienced in uh, all these kind of uh, 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 labs and all this. So. Uh, but uh, we're going to explain to you since we're going to we are having this uh, COVID-19, uh, both Australia, Perth uh, campus, and Malaysia we are affected. Uh, in Australia, they are having a bit of a face-to-face, -face, but in Malaysia, we are purely doing uh, online. So the labs will have to change a bit. Uh, we will have a bit of changes as compared to uh, uh, Perth because Perth they still have face-to-face. Uh, -face. So I'll uh, just run through with you the, uh, the uh, unit outlines. Uh, there are five uh, uh, unit uh, outcomes. Uh, uh, more importantly, I'd like to tell you a bit about the, uh, a bit of confusion uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with the uh, unit outlines. Uh, this is the breakdown. This is the most important uh, stuff. Uh, you have uh, quizzes, 25, uh, lab reports, you have a twenty-five percent and final, but this is basically uh, in the case where there's no COVID. Uh, so uh, this is a normal case. Uh, if there's no COVID nineteen, uh, this will be uh, this will be implementable. Uh, you have a very nice breakdown: twenty-five, twenty-five, and a final exam, fifty percent. I do not know whether you'll be happy or not uh, with the current situation of COVID nineteen. But let us look at what are the changes that. Uh, uh, introduced because of the COVID-19. As you can see, uh, there are three assessments. Uh, one is the uh, quizzes, uh, means to say that uh, they will have a lot of uh, uh, e-quizzes or questions for the lab. Uh, after you're able to answer all those, you get 25% uh, uh, of the overall marks. And this is, of course, the second element is the lab report. And final exam is 50%. But if you can see, after COVID-19, the, uh, the lab assessment uh, has become, uh, the, uh, the lab assessment has actually increased. And the final, uh, the final exam uh, has actually decreased. You can see that now instead of 25, 25, 50, you have 35, 35, 30. So uh, in, 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 in short, uh, you have very high internal marks. So I'm very sure that a lot of you will be uh, very happy with this. Uh, some of you might not be happy, but in any case, if you are confused, please let me know. Okay, you can send me an email, uh, or you can uh, use Moodle to contact me. Uh, we will only be using this uh, blackboard only for the uh, the collaborate, the ultra collaborate. Other than that, all the other stuff we will make use of the. Uh, the uh, Moodle, uh, all my uh, documents and additional stuff for me only will be posted to our Moodle. Uh, some of my tutorials, I will give you extra uh, tutorial uh, documents uh, because I feel that uh, it's good for us to have uh, more, more stuff that we can learn more about uh, the uh, microcomputers. So uh, 
Good news, 25, 25, 50, because of COVID-19, we will have 35, 35, 30. Now, the labs will be purely uh, online, and uh, I think uh, I will be joining uh, Dr. Filbert's uh, session also. Uh, uh, when the uh, labs uh, will be conducted, it will be purely online. Uh, so uh, I think I will leave that to uh, Dr. Filbert uh, when, uh, to, to explain more uh, on, uh, on the Moodle page. But uh, the uh, final exam is uh, 30%. So uh, this final exam will be open book test. I think uh, you have a bit of experience how is it done uh, last semester because of the COVID-19. And uh, uh, it will be more or less the same. Uh, I think they will be more on design questions. Uh, you are free to open a book, but uh, there will be uh, more uh, design questions. Uh, how do you... Let's say, for example, uh, we want to design this. How are you going to draw out schematics and all these kind of things? Uh, this unit is uh, is uh, tied to another uh, more advanced unit, which is called Embedded System Engineering. Uh, uh, initially, uh, the syllabus are uh, more or less the same, except that uh, Embedded System is a, form, is a bit more advanced. They cover more on the hardware, whereas this unit is more on uh, theoretical. And, uh, but uh, I think things have changed a bit. Uh, this, I'm not picking the embedded system. I'm only handling the microcomputers. This unit will be more on the uh, theoretical side. Uh, how does the microcomputer actually works? And uh, we're going to have a bit of hands-on uh, during the, uh, uh, the, 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 the lab sessions, okay, and also the tutorials. So uh, this is very theoretical. Uh, you, you will learn a bit about the, uh, the various uh, uh, programming language uh, associated with this microcomputers, computers, uh, namely assembly, assembly language, and uh, C programming. So these two are the uh, main stuff. Uh, we will explain more what are they, uh, micro, uh, this uh, assembly language and this uh, C programming. I'm very sure most of you have uh, have did a preliminary course on the uh, uh, fundamental uh, digital, uh, fundamentals on the digital. Uh, where you have experience on the uh, the FPGA and uh, digital design and all this, all this knowledge will actually uh, be very useful. Um, we will uh, we will dig up a bit of whatever that you've learned from the uh, from the uh, prerequisite courses, uh, digital design. Um, I suggest you go and learn back about transistors and uh, uh, about flip flops. Those are uh, very important because they are they are linked to memory designs and all these kind of things. So uh, a bit of suggestion: go back to learn about the uh, flip flops and the uh, and uh, flip flops and transistors, which are the uh, fundamentals for this uh, unit. Um, so there's only three uh, three elements: quiz, uh, lab projects, and uh, final exam, uh, not very complicated, but bear in mind, uh, why, why did you not change this table is because uh, you need to go through a lot of procedures to actually change. You need to go through Senate meeting and etc. to change this table. That's why you have, uh, you have this section here, uh, changes due to COVID-19. Uh, so uh, take note on this, 35, 35 and uh, 30. Okay, um, I will brief you more about uh, the uh, tutorials and the labs. The lab doesn't start until week three, and uh, the uh, tutorials doesn't start until uh, week two. Next week, uh, probably we'll have our first uh, tutorial. Um, yes, uh, we also cannot do, uh, in, uh, in, in Bentley, they have this thing called in-lab assessment. So uh, if, if you if you if you look at your in lab assessment uh, and you compare to your 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 friends in Bentley, uh, they have this thing called in lab assessment. So uh, anyway, we will we will make it uh, black and white for you. Uh, at the moment, it suffice to say that you have uh, three components: thirty five percent, thirty five percent, and you have this uh, final exam. So just just bear in mind. At this moment, we have these three components. Uh, exactly how we're going to do, uh, we're going to uh, discuss and let you know. I'll discuss with Dr. Filbert.
and let you know uh, in, in a black and white form. Okay, so don't worry, all these changes are necessary. Uh, everybody is having difficulty due to this COVID-19. It's going to be a lot of uh, uh, impromptu changes and all, this, and all these kind of things are uh, very cool. But please bear with us only for this semester. Uh, if this uh, COVID-19 issue is resolved, I think uh, everybody will have a better life. Okay, um, I think I will post this on the, uh, the Moodle, uh, but just bear in mind, I just want to clear up a bit of uh, confusion why this table and this part here is not the same, okay? Uh, we, will, we will do a bit of changes uh, here compared to Bentley. Uh, no worries, I will let you guys know. Anyways, I will try to make your life easy for this semester. Okay, so uh, we will jump into the uh, lectures for today. Uh, if you can see, wait a minute. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure why I cannot enable the uh, my camera so you can look at my face. I'll just try one more time, okay? I don't know why I cannot do, but uh, I'll just try next time, okay? So you can see my face as I speak, but uh, nevertheless, I think this is uh, moment this is good enough. Okay, uh, we'll jump straight to the lectures. Uh, in uh, Bentley, uh, they have a, a week one lecture. They go on with a week one lecture and they have a lot of uh, uh, introduction on uh, on uh, this uh, microcomputers, how it's applied in game. I think I will just skip it. Uh, I will jump straight into uh, week two, uh, the uh, first half of week two, uh, which is talking about the uh, Uh, which is talking about the uh, you hold on uh, I think uh, try to solve some issues okay Dr. Filbert is telling me that uh, the screen doesn't look so nice uh, let me clarify with him is impossible hold on uh, hold on Okay, uh, I'll exit for a while. I'll sh I think there's a bit of problem. Huh? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Huh? Okay, I think this should be better. Just uh, clear up some certain things. Uh, Hubert, can you uh, see uh, the screen better right now? Still, still not good. Yeah, still, yeah, still not good. Maybe you can open the P, uh, PPT first, or maybe yeah, then you can share. Hold on, uh, okay. Give me a few mm. seconds. I will try to straighten up the uh, screen. Hold on, hold on. Okay, uh, can you all see the uh, screen better right now? Or is there uh, like a tunneling effect on the screen? Still, still. Anyone still, uh, feedback? Still. still the so same. everything, uh, the screen is okay. If, if, I, if I show like this, is the screen okay? Not, not okay. I think it should be okay, right? No, no, no. Hello, hello. Hello. Okay. okay uh, if if what you are seeing on the screen is okay, then I will actually I will continue with the lectures for today. Okay. So, uh, oh, Gilbert is saying I'm uh, not okay. 
Still, still not okay. Ah, yo. Wonder what is going on with this ultra thing. Not okay still. Okay. Uh, let me let me let me do something to my. Uh, just don't display the tab. Okay, if, if uh, at the moment, if, if I don't display the tab, can you see uh, the uh, screen uh, showing microcomputer organization overview? Uh, can you see nicely right now? No, 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 cannot, cannot hear me. Uh? You cannot hear me. Uh, are you showing the slides? Okay, sir? Okay, because okay, I don't okay, see okay. any slides. Yeah, the slide, the slide. Okay. Maybe you can show the slide. <coughs> you open the slides, right? Okay, then. Okay. Just go out from the sharing content, I think. Go out first. Hey, hold on, hold on, a bit of a technical problem. Do not close the panel. Uh. Just uh, yeah, share content, you off first. Or just click. Okay, uh, you hold on, I will send the, uh, the document to Dr. Philbert. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm sharing with you all the uh, slides. Uh, this is the same slide that I'm sharing on uh, Moodle also. Okay, uh, while I uh, wait for Dr. Filbert to help me out with the slide, uh, I think I'll just uh, continue with the lecture. So uh, this... Uh, Microcomputers, uh, it actually consists of a, a of a few uh, things, uh, which is uh, anything to do with uh, uh, this uh, electronics has something to do with this. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Keshen, but I think I'm in the middle of the lecture. Uh, I think I will just uh, let Dr. Filbert help me out with the uh, 
PowerPoint. Uh, okay, I'm sending the PowerPoint to Dr. Fubert. He will help me out with the PowerPoints. But uh, at the very moment, I think I'll just continue with the uh, lecture first. Uh, just a bit of uh, uh, explanation on this. Uh, Okay, give me a few seconds. Uh, I need to open my email and send to Dr. Hubert. Okay, just a few seconds. Okay, um, I'll just continue with my lecture. I think uh, very soon you will see the uh, screen on the uh, this uh, this uh, thing. So uh, microcomputers actually, uh, whenever that you see an electronic uh, component, there is a most probably a microcomputer in your equipment. Let's say for example, a simple calculator. Uh, you might you might feel that hey, this is a very uh, small uh, small thing. Uh, how would it actually involve a micro computer inside, but uh, if you really open up uh, even the simplest thing, a calculator, you will know that uh, every single electronics equipment actually have uh, a, a microcontroller inside, okay? Second example, uh, most obvious one is the uh, phone, okay? There's a lot of stuff in your phone, keypads, but the, the, the main component is actually the, uh, the, uh, the microcontroller or the microcomputer inside the, uh, the phone. So that is the most important, uh, the engine of any electronic uh, electronics uh, uh, equipment. Okay, so uh, maybe we look at uh, examples that is uh, uh, it's uh, less obvious. Okay, let us look at um, okay. Let us take a, a washing machine for example. Okay, washing machine. You might you might feel that hey, this okay. Can see students. So washing machine, you might feel that hey, it's uh, it's uh, unrelated to. Uh, yep. Uh, yeah. Thanks, you. But maybe we go back to the first page. First page. Huh? First slide. Okay. So uh, if if you if you look at uh, 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 for example a washing machine, you might find that hey, uh, this washing machine is uh, unrelated to a uh, computer. But actually, if you if you actually take out a washing machine and uh, there is uh, there is a, a circuit board with a microcomputer inside. Okay, and this circuit board is the thing that does everything. Uh, when you press a button, it processes uh, the uh, fuzzy logic system and all these kind of things. So, um, okay, another example that is uh, much less obvious. Uh, for example, uh, a remote control car that uh, you often seen. Uh, even inside this remote control car, there is actually a micro uh, computer. You might not know it, but uh, you might not know it. But uh, this uh, micro computer actually takes in the input from the remote and uh, do the necessary uh, uh, do the necessary uh, motor controls for your remote control car. So this this thing is a uh, this thing is in everywhere. Okay, so in in your future job market. Uh, the microcontroller, microcomputers are actually in every single electronic equipment. Okay, um, so this is a very good field to to be involved in. Uh, take for example, uh, uh, this uh, that now it is very famous. You have this kind of thing called the uh, vacuum cleaner. So it's a, it's a robotic vacuum cleaner. Um, 
And uh, inside this robotic vacuum cleaner, you have actually a very sophisticated microcomputer. Uh, when, you, when you face a wall, when you face an obstacle, what do you do? So when you face a, a wall, an obstacle, uh, what do you do? All these are actually processed by the, uh, the uh, microcomputer. And uh, you have microcomputers everywhere, every single gadget that you can imagine of. Even uh, if you look at, uh, if you go to the lab, ME102, uh, some of these uh, uh, instruments, like for example, a multimeter, a very simple multimeter, also have a microcomputer inside. So basically, every single uh, electronic gadgets have uh, their microcomputers inside. You just uh, don't realize it. And when you, uh, it's like an engine of any type of electronic uh, equipment. Okay, so I think that's in, uh, enough to actually tell you that uh, if you master these microcomputers, basically you can design a lot of things. Okay, so if you can see uh, one of the example of a very famous microcomputer, it's uh, the Arduino. Uh, I think in your first year uh, electrical system, you learn about uh, Arduino, uh, very basic. Uh, that itself is actually a micro uh, microcomputer. Very simple one that uh, you can program and do your stuff. Okay, so uh, next next slide. Uh, next slide. Okay, so in this uh, lecture, we will cover a few things. Uh, we we uh, previous previous one uh, slide number two. Okay, yeah. So in this uh, uh, lecture, we will cover. Uh, this is an introduction of uh, what we're going to learn. And uh, in this uh, whole unit, uh, CMPE two thousand three. Uh, we will basically cover all these kind of things in depth, okay? Uh, so we will cover uh, the CPU, ALU, uh, memories, and uh, uh, probably a bit of interfacing with hardware, just a bit. Uh, we will cover uh, uh, analog to digital conversion and all these kind of things. So all these units is very theoretical. Uh, it's a bit different from uh, embedded system engineering. This unit as a preliminary, we will go more in depth. Okay, uh, we will also spend some time to uh, to to relearn back on uh, C programming, uh, the the if else loops and all this. These are for people who are not very familiar with these concepts, but we will cover. Okay, and uh, in this particular lecture, uh, we will talk about a bit about uh, microcomputers and microcontrollers. Now, uh, we, we this unit is actually called micro. Uh, computers, but microcomputers is basically an umbrella term for microprocessor and microcontroller. We will tell you what's the difference between this stuff, but they are actually more or less the same thing, just that in terms of architecture, they're not the same. Okay, and uh, microprocessor, microcontroller, and we also have this thing called RIS and SIS. Uh, what is RIS and what is SIS? Okay, if you can uh, know that. Uh, Every single uh, processor, they actually process information, instruction sets very differently. Okay, uh, certain your handphone is actually using a type of a RIS uh, instruction set. Now these are RIS or SIS. Basically, they're just instruction sets. It is how the uh, processor information and uh, takes this uh, this uh, instruction sets. And uh, what do they do with the instruction? Now there's two formats. RIS and SIS are basically two formats. RIS, uh, RIS and SIS are just instruction sets uh, for two types of uh, two types of instruction sets, different formats. We're going to go more as we cover. And uh, a hardware model. We're going to learn about the. Uh, we're going to learn about the bus system, the memory system, and the uh, the CPU system. Uh, CPU uh, consists of the uh, controller unit, and then you have your ALU, and you have. Uh, we will also cover a lot about memories, registers. So uh, these kind of things uh, we will cover in this lecture. Give you a brief overview what what we are learning in this unit, and then for the subsequent weeks we will cover in depth uh, registers, ALU, and all these kind of things. Okay, so uh, let's go to the next slide. Next slide. Okay. So uh, the basic structure, if you're given an uh, exam question, you know, uh, what is the basic structure of a microcomputer? Uh, remember microcomputer, there are a lot of microcomputer types like the previous slide we shared. Uh, there are uh, microprocessors and there are microcontrollers, but 
both of these we can call it as microcomputers. They're just microcomputers, okay? Uh, the microcomputer consists of a central processing unit. They also have a system memory. Now imagine uh, the easiest way to learn about uh, microcomputers is to imagine uh, it as a smaller version of your computers, okay? But what happened if you take out the uh, what happened if you take out the uh, the RAM, okay, from your, your 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 CPU or your your laptop? It will not work. Why? Because you do not have memory, okay. And the CPU works in tandem with the memory. Uh, you take out the memory, your CPU doesn't work. Now CPU also need a clock, okay. So you have to put a pulse without the clock. The CPU doesn't know. Just like uh, if you're playing piano, without the uh, without without rhythm, it you cannot play a proper song, okay? So you need timing and you need a ticking. Like uh, if you're playing piano, there's this instrument called metadrome, if I'm not mistaken. It gives time and the pianist can actually play uh, based on the uh, this uh, metadrome. Uh, more importantly, uh, you have input and output. Uh, in, your, in your desktop or in your laptop, you might not see this input and output. Uh, because actually there is uh, your USB is an input and output. Uh, these are input outputs uh, uh, that are very high level input outputs. But on the uh, basic microcomputers like uh, Arduino, uh, if you've learned Arduino, uh, you will realize that all the input and outputs are in uh, in pin form. All right. So there is pins actually sticking out uh, in this. Uh, in this uh, micro uh, microcontrollers, for example, Arduino, you have analog pins and you have this uh, uh, digital pins. So all these pins are actually very important. Uh, you might not be able to relate very well, but in your desktop or in your laptop, you have uh, you have uh, USB. There are also a form of uh, input and outputs. Uh, when you connect your USB to a printer, you know it it, it connects your processor to the world. That's why uh, input and outputs are very important. Uh, if you do not have input and outputs, you are basically just having a processor. Okay, then you have your system bus. Uh, now, uh, what is system bus? You can you can basically call it a bunch of wires that connect to uh, all these memories and stuff. Okay, so uh, there are various types of buses. Uh, we will cover this in the uh, subsequent lecture. Um, there are different buses for different types of stuff. Okay, if you have uh, if you want to have a control bus, okay, the control bus does one thing, and a, a data bus also does another thing, okay. So uh, all these uh, buses we will cover in depth, but today's lecture is just give you a very brief overview. All right, uh, next next slide, please. Okay, now this is the uh, graphical form of a of a microcomputer. Okay, of course, uh, if you, if you if you look at the uh, this this part. Uh, you have the program data and you have your 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 uh, whatever that you process your your program and your data okay data means uh, whatever that you generate okay uh, be it your register content and whatever that you, you you need to run your program okay so these are actually in the memory and this bus actually uh, connects these are just a bunch of wires now remember system bus are actually uh, very small wires okay so they are very uh, small wires that connect one component to another all right so if you open a pcb okay they are equivalent to the tracks if you open your pcb uh, you open your arduino you really take it out uh this system bus is equivalent to the tracks the pcb tracks okay on your your thing but it's on a die it's on a chip itself okay so the system bus is on chip itself and uh of course uh, nothing works without the uh, central processing unit Central processing unit actually uh, extracts the uh, the uh, program, okay, uh, from the uh, random access memory. The random access memory actually contains all the instruction. When you do a C programming, the uh, the program is actually stored on the random access uh, memory, and the CPU actually extracts instruction one by one. Okay. Now, what about this purple thing? This is a power supply, you know, and the timing. Okay. So every single just like the uh, the example that I gave you, the piano example, okay, you need some form of clock, some form of a metadrome to make the uh, the uh, processing unit enable the processing unit to process the uh, instruction sequentially. 
okay so without without a clock you cannot process information sequentially okay let's say for example uh you have a certain instruction okay you get one information from a ram and then you process it you send you send it to uh, uh another register okay now with this kind of thing you need a clock you need a clock to make it function and uh, you also have uh, various uh, power supply uh, set settings. You can have a low power mode, you can have a, a normal power mode, and you also have very important element is a uh, reset. Now, if your computer is hanged, most of you know what to do. You just press uh, you know, uh, the start on off button and you reset the computer. A microcontroller also have this kind of reset button. Why? Because without the reset button, uh your computer might your microcomputer might hang okay and this reset button sometimes they can program it to reset automatically uh, they have a lot of modes like for example uh, low power mode uh, disruption mode or they even have this kind of thing called uh, watchdog mode okay watchdog mode if something goes wrong with your microcontroller and is detecting that uh, no instruction is flowing in the in, in the system means to say that your pc is actually hang and it's time to do a reset this is what we call watchdog, okay? And then uh, you also have your input-output I/O system. Uh, this input-output is uh, connected to the uh, the equipment. Let's say, for example, your motors and all these kind of things uh, is connected to your equipment, uh, very much like your USB. Okay. Uh, next slide, <clears throat> uh, Hubert. Next slide, please. Okay. So uh, the most important thing in the uh, micro computer is actually the CPU. Uh, I wish I can explain to you in a very in-depth uh, in depth way, but if you can remember from your uh, foundations of digital design, you have access to this thing called uh, FPGA, and you do a lot of uh, uh, you do a lot of uh, you do a lot of uh, uh, transistor configuration with this FPGA. I, I need you guys to actually uh, reflect back on this uh, unit. Uh, FPGA actually is a bunch of transistors, okay, and you can actually build a CPU from these transistors, okay. So transistors, uh, you can CPU is nothing but a configured uh, circuit which is able to draw to to extract the instruction sets and to do the necessary processing. And they are the the, the most basic unit to for this CPU is basically just transistors. Transistors, you can make all sorts of logic. You can make a flip flop and you can make all this kind of logic. When you cascade these designs higher and higher, uh, you can have, you, you, you're basically building a CPU. Now, CPU is nothing but a unit, it's, it's, a, it's a circuit that is able to extract the instruction sets, do the processing, and send the information to I.O. Let's say, for example, I give an example, you probably uh, have experience with Arduino. Okay, Arduino, you do the C programming and all these kind of codes are actually stored on the, um, the memory. Your CPU actually uh, extracts the information. Uh, after it extracts the information, it does a lot of processing. Let's say, for example, analog to digital converter, and then it sends the information to the, uh, to the necessary uh, input output. So your, the CPU's main purpose is to actually extract the uh, information from the RAM and to does the and to do the uh, processing okay uh, then after that it does the necessary thing send the information back to registers or the input output okay so most important thing uh, if you're in let's say for example you're a big company in intel the most prestigious unit or the department would be uh, the uh, cpu cpu department in fact uh, this this uh, most of these uh, departments they run very secretively they have code names and they, they are very secretive because to be able to design a CPU is a very important skill. Um, if you remember, I think uh, some time ago, uh, there was this uh, a particular guy who, uh, who was, uh, uh, he was actually working for uh, Apple and then he got pinched over by another company. So the whole uh, Apple, uh, Apple, uh, company actually they were in a bit of trouble because their main uh, CPU designer or their chip designer has actually went to another company so you can imagine how important it is to have a uh, uh, very good foundations in all these kind of things uh, in this unit we will not cover in depth how to build a CPU and all these kind of things we will just 
cover uh, roughly what a CPU does and the schematics of it and all these kind of things uh, we will cover in more advanced units. All right. So just a brief overview. CPU is the most important element in the uh, in, in the microcomputers. It's the one. It's the heart of the system. If you can equate it to an engine of a car. If there is no engine in the car, the system doesn't work. That's how important the CPU is. All right. So our next next slide, please, uh, Doctor Hubert. Okay. So uh, another very important uh, element in the uh, the uh, microcomputers are the memory, okay? So uh, uh, when I was uh, about your, your age, uh, undergrad, I was actually thinking, you know, how does, uh, how, how do you build uh, transistors into memories? Uh, that's why I need you guys to actually reflect back on your, on your unit uh, foundation of digital design. You remember flip-flop, okay? So a flip-flop actually, uh, uh, flip-flop actually, uh, uh, retains the 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 uh, the bit whether it's zero or one as long as you power it up it retains the information okay let's say it could be a one or a zero so uh, flip flops are a main part of memories you you build a memory from flip flops but there are also a lot of other technology uh, that are uh, involved in this uh, memory design uh, you have volatile and non volatile memories uh, we'll cover about that uh, in the subsequent uh, uh, lectures. But, uh, just to give you a brief overview, uh, memories are described as uh, two types. The uh, two types of memories. One is the program memory. Program memory means the stuff that you you program. Let's say, for example, the instruction sets. Now, I take example the Arduino because it is something that you guys are very familiar of. When you do a C programming, okay, in your Arduino IDE, uh, you compile it, and when you compile it, the compiler actually uh, converts the C programming into uh, into something that the microcontroller can can save or extract later. Okay, let's say for example you 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 code okay uh, analog to digital convert uh, convert from a certain inputs in the Arduino. So the compiler will actually uh, change it into uh, certain formats that is stored in the memory. So those kind of things are called program memory and. Uh, Data memory is something like the RAM on your computer. Okay, it these things are temporary memory. Let's say, for example, your program is running. Okay, uh, it's actually uh, let's give an example. Your program is actually extracting ten analog to digital converter and summing summing this uh, analog to digital converter values. So while you're doing this instruction, you need to have certain memories to store. Okay, ADC one. Uh, ADC 2, ADC 3, ADC 4, 5, 6, so on and so forth until 10. So you have 10 values and you do a summation of these 10 values. Now, when you're doing something like a summation or a process, you need somewhere to store the, the memory temporarily. And this is what we call data memory because this information are only needed when you're running the program. Okay. So program memory is something that uh, you 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 type out and you compile and you save it. It's more permanent. Data memory is only required is storing stuff only when you're running a program. So make sure you you get these two very clearly. Okay. Now, uh, if I can give you a short quiz, all right. If I can give you a short quiz, um, if you are doing a, a a calculator, all right, a calculator, and you're punching in the numbers. Okay. Let's say for example, you punch in eight plus eight. So this value number eight that you punch it in your calculator, is it a program memory or is it a data memory? Okay. So the answer for this question is that the number eight that you punch in is a data memory. Okay. So eight plus eight, when you punch the first eight, you will be stored in a register and you punch in the operation, which is a plus, it will be stored in another register. You punch in the third value, eight. Okay, so it's eight plus eight. All these are actually called data memory. Okay, program memory is mainly to store whatever that you have programmed on your PC. So I hope you get these two elements very clear. Uh, in, in in times where there's no COVID nineteen, where we have regular midterms and uh, this uh, final exam, uh, this question actually always pop up. Okay, so I hope you get it very clearly. What is program memory? What is data memory? Okay. Uh, always think back on the example of the calculator. 
8 plus 8, okay, these three elements, 8 plus the operation is plus, and the second, second value, 8, all these are actually data memory, okay? Now we go to the uh, third slide, third slide that's for memory, we go to the third slide. Okay, now uh, this, this one is, uh, I'll just cover briefly because this is actually very common sense. Uh, you have your computers and you, you want to do something, you want to communicate with the outside world, all right? So this is the most accurate term for your computers to communicate, to do something to the outside world. For example, uh, you, you, you have a printer and you press play, uh, you press print, okay? Now, if you do not have input and output, uh, whatever that you press, you, you will not be able to do physical stuff with the outside world. Now, these input output pins are exposed so that you can connect to your hardware system and you're able to uh, do stuff. Uh, your computers can communicate with the outside world, okay? In short, that's the most uh, easiest way to actually explain it, okay? Let's say, for example, uh, uh, I think an Arduino, okay? Arduino, you, you communicate with the, uh, let's say, for example, uh, uh, infrared sensor, okay, uh, it's a proximity sensor, okay. Now, without the I.O. pin, the system, the computer cannot actually extract the information from the, the outside world and it cannot do things to the outside world. For example, it cannot run a motor. Running motor is actually communicating with the outside world, okay. Uh, getting information from sensors is another way of uh, extracting information from the outside world. So communicating with the environment, with the outside world, you need I.O. systems, okay? Now, uh, uh, basically, I.O. systems are uh, what we can assume as the, uh, the, uh, the sensor's interface, okay? You interface with uh, output or input, okay? Input means sensors, output means uh, motors, actuators, and etc. So all these uh, input output systems, they have formats. They have I2C communication. They have, uh, they have SPI communications. And then they also have, uh, uh, let's say for example, serial or whatever, or even uh, binary uh, input output, okay? But most common ones are I2C and SPI. Uh, I think you will learn, we will cover this. SPI I2Cs are uh, input output systems that are more common, okay? Even uh, you can interpret the zeros and one from your input output pins as a form of uh, communication with your, your external devices, all right? So, um, okay, I think that's it for this. Uh, this part, input and output, basically means enabling the computer to communicate with the outside world, all right? So, uh, next, next slide. Okay, system bus. Now, uh, just now I was actually mentioning if you're able to take an Arduino, you pull out the black color chip, the Atmel chip, and uh, somehow you're able to use acid or whatever to remove the plastic, what you'll be able to see are very fine lines between the different components, okay? So there, there are memory integrated inside the chip itself. Uh, so if you're able to use an acid, I won't, I won't uh, recommend you to do it, but I'm just saying if you're able to use an acid to just uh, remove the plastic from your Arduino chip. What you will see is a lot of fine wires, okay? And these wires, uh, wires are divided into three types. They are address bus, they are data bus, and they are control bus. Now, I'm going to roughly explain because in uh, subsequent lectures, it will go in depth, okay? We will have an example of how we do uh, bus designs and all these kind of things, okay? So bus, even in bus design, it, it depends on your memory. If your memory is 16-bit, Okay, you, your bus will be uh, 2 to the power of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, you have 16 bits, okay? So you have 16 lines. If you're 16 bits, you have 16 lines. If you have 8 bits, you will have uh, 8 lines, okay? So most of the address is, the address uh, bus length is determined by your, your memory, your memory address. If your memory address is a very big, let's say, for example, 16 bit, in that case, your your bus will be at the length of as the uh, the the length will be bigger, all right? It will be uh, parallelly uh, eight lines or sixteen lines or or so on and so forth, following your your size of your address. Okay, so certain microcontrollers they have even until thirty two, uh, thirty two uh, the the thirty two bits address. So 
if it's 32 bits, your 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 bus will have uh, 32 lines. If it's 16 bits, your bus will have 16 lines. Now, um, data bus is uh, is also the same. It depends on your your data. Okay, you, you're running on a system that is uh, 16 bits, 32 bits, 8 bits. Uh, all that will determine your bus. Okay. So if you're running, uh, if your instructions are 8 bits, that means to say your data bus will have 8 lines. If it's 16 bits, your, your bus will have basically 16 lines. So this tool is actually dependent on the address, memory size, and also the, the uh, data. Okay. Now control bus is basically only for one reason. Now you have a lot of components inside your chip. If you can open your microcontroller chip, you have a lot of components. And these components, normally you can do stuff like write. Write means you transfer information to a memory or things like that. You, you could have certain chips, okay? Uh, you could have up to 16 or 32 chips, memory chips inside your, your microcontroller. And in this case, you would actually need to determine whether you want to write uh, put information to the chip or you want to extract you want to read now this is a classic example of what a bus is for uh, second example it could be enable let's say for example uh, there are probably 100 components in your in your micro micro uh, processor okay you would want to actually uh, control uh, which one to 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 activate and which one not to activate so this is another example of control bus uh, to control the enable pin. Let's say, for example, uh, you want to only communicate with one memory. When you want to only communicate with one memory, you can enable the uh, enable pins to be either one or zero. Okay. So do not worry. At this very moment, all you need to know is that there are three types of buses. The address bus, the data bus, and the control bus. And roughly, what do they do? Remember, address is to send the address, the memory address. Okay. Data is the actual data itself on the memory you extract, either you, you send or you read or you write, okay? And control bars is for stuff like enable pins uh, and read or write operations. We will go through all this in depth. At the very moment, all you need to do, all you need to know is that there are three types of buses, okay? Now uh, we move on to the uh, next slide. Now, what's the uh, main difference? Just now we mentioned micro, Computers, there are two types, okay? There are microcontrollers and then there are microprocessors. How do we know the difference? There's only, I'm going to tell you in a very brief way, if the memory itself is located in the chip die, means to say that it's a microcontroller. If the memory of that, that, that system is located outside of the chip die, means to say that that is actually a microprocessor. I give you an example your laptop okay you have your intel intel chip okay now intel chip is it a micro uh, microcontroller or is it a microprocessor intel chip okay i give you one second to think about this your microcontroller uh, your your intel chip is it a microcontroller or your microprocessor now the answer is that your intel chip is a microprocessor now what is the reason that i say that you remember I mentioned the memory, if it's located in the same die, it's a controller. If the memory is located outside of the, the CPU die, it's basically a microprocessor. So Intel chips have external RAM. It also have external memory. It means to say that the Intel chip on your PC, it's a microprocessor. Now, microprocessors, when you expand it, if the capacity increases, it becomes a processor. So that's why your Intel chip is called a processor. It's not called a controller. Okay. So I hope that you make it very clear. This is another classic question where they always ask again and again. What's the difference between a microcontroller and a microprocessor? If the memory is located in the same die as the CPU, means to say it's a microcontroller. Uh, now, what is the reason they do this? Microcontrollers are normally for stuff that have a, a very small capacity, okay? The, the uh, processing capacity is normally very small, whereas microprocessors have higher processing capacities. I'll give you an example. I think you're familiar with this uh, uh, single board computer called Raspberry Pi. Now, Raspberry Pi is another example of microprocessor. 
because the the CPU is located uh, the CPU and the memory is not located in the same die when they design the circuitry is located the the memory is not included in the same die whereas for Arduino Arduino you don't you do not need if you look at an Arduino Uno for example everything is inside the ML chip you don't need to buy additional memories to put inside your, your ML chip or whatever everything is in a single chip if you remove that chip basically the Arduino board does not function okay Arduino board does not have external memory in the circuit it only have uh, in fact Arduino if you just take out the black color chip it will function by itself with the, uh, with the with the clock all you need to do is just to supply a clock and the Arduino will be able to function okay so uh, I hope that clears up if you have uh, still confusion what is microcontroller what is microprocessor I hope that clears up for you if memory is in the same die as the CPU means to say that it's a microcontroller microcontroller have normally have lesser uh, uh, computing capacity as compared to microprocessor okay if you can have uh, something to hang on to uh, this idea uh, you've never heard of people doing extensive uh, deep learning or machine learning algorithms on an Arduino Uno. That can only be done on a CPU or a Raspberry Pi. Okay, so I hope that 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 idea helps you to understand fundamentally the difference between microcontroller and microprocessors. Okay, so uh, next next slide, please, uh, Doctor Philbert. Okay. Uh, Microprocessor uh, contains, uh, okay, I think this is basically repetitive of whatever that I've said. i just read out for you. Processors uh, contain a general purpose CPU in its die. Uh, it doesn't have memory inside the die. Die means it's the black color chip, see? So if you can see an Arduino Uno, uh, the chip itself, uh, whatever that's inside the chip itself is considered a die, all right? So it can issue multiple instruction capable of branch prediction and all this numeric processing. In short, microprocessor has higher computing capacity. Okay, I've uh, spoken about this in the previous slide. So just roughly go through. We will have tutorials on this as well. All right, uh, next slide, please, Dr. Gilbert. Okay, so uh, if you can see now 8085, most of you haven't even been born. In fact, when 8085 was designed, uh, me myself haven't been born. Okay, so this is a very classic, uh, one of the very classic uh, microprocessor that you can find in the market. Uh, 8085. Uh, actually, when I was even doing my degree, this unit, uh, they they used to study this uh, unit just briefly, you know, as a as a case study. 8085 are normally used in stuff like. Uh, uh, traffic lights, you can still see this 8085 being used in traffic light. Um, uh, other examples, uh, some of this uh, early version of computers actually use uh, 8085. Okay, so is 8085 is basically an Intel product. Now you can see from this picture itself, how do I know that this guy is actually a microprocessor? You can see that uh, there is this address bus and the memory is located outside outside of the chip die okay inside the chip die means you will not be able to see this memory uh, sorry you will not be able to see this memory uh, if it's a microcontroller you will not be able to see this externally but in this case the memory is located externally from this microcontroller you can see so this 8085, you need additional memory. You cannot just plug and play. You need to design the bus. The bus extracts the, the, the information from the data bus, extract the information. Let's say, for example, the memory contains certain information. Okay, This CPU will have to extract the information using the bus. So this, uh, this is a very good illustration of what the bus, uh, in simple terms, these are just jargons. In simple terms, they are very fine wires, very, very fine wires. All right, so uh, question might ask you, okay, based on this picture, uh, do you think this is a microprocessor or a microcontroller? And when you answer, well, this is a microprocessor because the memory is located outside of the, uh, the chip die, you know, you will get full marks, all right? So this is an example of a question that can actually come up. All right, uh, next, next uh, slide, please, Dr. Gilbert. 
All right, these are now. Uh, okay, I've already given out the answers to you. Uh, Intel uh, processors, are they microprocessor or are they microcontrollers? This is a very simple question. You, this is basically a processor because memories are located outside. Now, uh, 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 how, how does the processor actually extracts information and all this is a very complicated process. In fact, uh, I find that in Malaysia, probably very few people have the kind of knowledge of how to actually design a processor. It's a very intricate process and normally in a big companies, they don't share the secrets, okay? But these are the uh, few big players, okay? You have Intel. Uh, Freescale, if you've, uh, you're involved in medical device, you've probably heard of Freescale. It's a very famous uh, uh, microprocessor uh, company, uh, mainly for medical device and military equipment, okay? Xilog is very rare. Um, it's a uh, normally for very specific type of ICs. Uh, Fujitsu, Siemens, all these are basically smaller players, but big players are basically Intel. You're forgetting one, uh, which is AMD, uh, also processor, right? So uh, we are not going to cover uh, multi-cores, okay, for this unit, uh, but suffice to say why we show this image is just to uh, let you able to differentiate the difference between controller and uh, processor, okay? So uh, next slide. Okay, uh, less complex microcontrollers are less, less complex com compared to their microprocessor counterparts, okay? They are very good for applications that require minimal number of external components. If you can see one of the example, in your first year, you've uh, done some stuff with your uh, Arduino Nano. Okay, Arduino Nano is a typical type of microcontroller. It doesn't have an external memory and everything is actually integrated into a single die. Now, do we find it very convenient to use microcontroller? Certain stuff like, for example, uh, uh, let's say, for example, hair dryer, okay? Why do you need such a complicated things for a small hair dryer or a washing machine? Why do you need so complicated? It can be a simple microcontroller uh, with the in, uh, inputs and outputs and everything is done. So. Uh, you normally use a microcontroller for small things because microprocessors are much more expensive. Give you an example. How much does an Arduino Uno cost? It costs about less than 20 ringgit, okay, for those uh, clone type from China. Whereas a Raspberry Pi will easily cost you about 200, okay, because Raspberry Pi is a complex, more complex microprocessor, okay? So uh, this, this is an example, just keep it in your head, the, the main difference, okay? less computation capacity and uh, it's also much cheaper okay so if i give an example if you were to de design a small device let's say a small iot device that have uh, probably three or four states uh, based on a state diagram uh, uh, what would you use for me definitely i will use a microcontroller because i it doesn't involve a lot of complexity it doesn't even need to involve uh, uh, barrel processing and all these kind of things. It does not need to. Okay, so uh, simple IoT device, uh, microcontroller would be the uh, most optimal device. Okay, bear in mind in the industry, everything is about cost. Okay, you normally use the most simple device for its job, not the most complex. Right. So next slide, uh, Doctor Fieber. All right, uh, if I can show you, if you can see this very clearly, you will see that uh, now the big box, uh, this this big box is basically the whole die, okay? And if you can see, this is the chip itself. Everything is located on the chip itself. If you're able to use, I don't want to, I don't want to encourage you. Uh, officially, I'm not encouraging you, but uh, if you are experts in uh, all these kind of things, you would actually take a, an Atmel from your Arduino Uno, you can actually use a very, uh, you can use an acid, hydrochloric acid, and to actually remove the plastic cover, the black color plastic, and what you will see is basically components. Everything will be on the same chip, okay? You have your ALU, you have your IO, and you will have all your, especially your memory, okay? So if I give you the question and I show you this image, what is this? straight away you will, you will be able to identify this actually a microcontroller. Why? The reason why is because the program memory is located in the same die, is in the same chip, 
is in the same circuit, all right? So very simply put it, okay, that's the main difference between controller and uh, processor. Okay, uh, next uh, next slide, please, Dr. Hubert. Okay, these are various uh, uh, various brands that you can find. Uh, Samsung, normally Samsung equipment use their own microcontrollers. Uh, small stuff, Samsung has a lot of uh, uh, electronic gadgets. Normally they use back their own uh, microcontrollers. Okay, uh, they come in uh, different uh, different formats. The instruction formats could be 4 bits, 8 bits, 16 bit, and 32. Now, for 4 bit information, normally it's supposed to be very, very small device. It could be a very small, um, it could be a pen drive, okay? It could be a very, uh, it could be a pen drive. If you have something like a pen drive, okay? So the uh, processor will be a very small and the instruction set will be very small. But a pen drive have, uh, would have very high address bus, okay? Although the processing could be 4 bits, could be 8 bits, but a pen drive would have very big addressing bus. Why? Because pen drive have very big address, memory address capacity, okay? So if it's a simple device, you can actually get a 8-pin microcontroller in the market at the moment. So you can design something that's very, uh, very basic with 4 bits. You want to go higher, okay? These models have a uh, higher capacity and uh, they normally have uh, 8 bits, 16 bits, 32 bits. So at the moment, microcontrollers, uh, if you have your if you've encountered this uh, microchip devices, normally they name their microchip based on the uh, the bits. Okay, if you have 32 PIC 32, means say it's a 32 bit device. All right, so it depends on the computing capacity. Okay, uh, let's say it has uh, 32 bit registers. Normally, it's uh, it's 32 bit device. The data, the data bus would be 32 bits. So four bits, eight bits, 16 bit, 32 bit. Now, if I ask you. S3 FN 22 BX ZZ. Uh, how many parallel wires would this bus have? Okay, simple answer. This device, 32 bit, would have 32 wires for its bus. Why? Because information is 32. Okay, so memory will have 32. Information it comes in 32 bus. So the data bus would have 32 parallel wires. Okay, next slide. Next slide. Good. Thanks. Now, okay, a uh, simple quiz. Uh, if you look at your, this is uh, Arduino. Now, not all Arduino is microcontroller. For example, uh, uh, this guy, these two guys, Arduino Mega is definitely, uh, is definitely a microcontroller. Also, Nano is definitely a microcontroller. But there are certain models of Arduino that are actually microprocessors. Now, this guy, uh, this guy is also a microcontroller. Uh, if it's not because of the COVID-19, you guys will be doing this in your lab, which is uh, you will have a, a clearer picture. This is a typical example of a microcontroller. It's from Texas Instrument called MSP430. Okay? So now all these other stuff are basically for the uh, communication. All these chips are for I2C communication and so on and so forth. You know? And uh, this is the main IC. For the uh, for the MSP four three zero, so these three of these are basically microcontrollers. Okay, uh, microprocessor is more like Intel, more like Raspberry Pi, for example. Okay, uh, next slide. Now, uh, just now I've mentioned uh, very roughly uh, your 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 mic microcomputers, whether it's a microcontroller or a microprocessor. They extract information from the memory, the instruction sets. Okay, let's say for example, uh, it could be uh, now the instruction sets are normally in hexadecimal. Okay, so it could be uh, let's say for example, A uh, is a it could be A B C one. Okay, so the computer will actually extract this information from the uh, the memory uh, A B C one. Let's say for example, because it's hexadecimal. And you need to interpret what does this ABC1 actually means. So there are actually two formats available. One is what they call the RIS format and what is called the SIS format. Now, uh, the RIS format is basically you need to do more work. The compilers will need to do more work because the instruction sets are basically uh, more hardware. Hardware is reduced hardware. It means to say that the hardware 
that is not complicated would normally use the RISC format, reduce instruction sets computing. SIS means complex instruction set computing. Now, if you have a more high-end device, normally they will use SIS. Uh, hardware, if, if let's say your device normally is more expensive and it has a more, uh, uh, more complex hardware, normally they will use SIS because uh, SIS will have more simpler in terms of uh, the, uh, the programs, how they interpret the programs will be simpler. Uh, one SIS instruction would actually consist of a few RIS uh, instruction sets. So the instruction sets for this SIS format is normally simpler. Why is simpler? Because it makes use of a lot of complex hardware architecture. Whereas for RIS, the instruction sets will be more complex. The reason is because it has more, it has less hardware complexity. Okay, so it depends if you're building, you're designing a, a micro computer. Okay, you're in your team of uh, 40 people or 50 people, and you're designing a new type of microcontroller. Let's call it uh, Wong number one. Okay, you're designing this new microcontroller called Wong number one, right? And uh, this microcontroller, you have to determine whether this microcontroller is actually using the RIS format or the sys format now you ask yourself this wong number one is it uh does it have a lot of uh, hardware complexity is it very expensive and has a lot of hardware complexity if the 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 answer is yes most probably your wong number one microcontroller will be adopting the sys whereas if let's say for example you're using uh you're designing a much more simpler device cheap device that has a uh, it's normally used for very small things like, for example, hair dryer and stuff like that. Normally, uh, they would use this RIS. Remember, RIS stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computing. SIS stands for Complex Instruction Set Computing. SIS normally consists of, is uh, normally dominated by uh, uh, microprocessors that have very complex hardware. Okay, So they are generally more more expensive, okay, to implement. So if you're in a team of 40 or people, 40 or 50 people, and you're designing a new microcontroller, ask yourself uh, which one to use, and uh, which one to use is dependent on the microcontroller and uh, probably the price range. Okay, if it's a very expensive device, most probably it's using uh, SIS. If it's a very cheap device, most probably it's actually using RIS. All right. So our next slide, please. Okay, I think uh, this one I've covered uh, enough. Uh, SIS means complex instruction, uh, more, more hardware intensive, less the instruction sets to program this thing will be uh, less because it's like a very high level, slightly more high level compute, uh, compared to RIS. All right, so uh, next, next slide. Okay, reduce instruction set. So normally uh, instruction sets will be longer. Okay, to do an equivalent, uh, let's say for example, uh, to do an equivalent uh, instruction sets, uh, add the value of register one and register two. Okay, probably in the reduced instruction set, it will be two or three lines, but for the sys instruction set, it will be reduced to about uh, one instruction set because it has a lot of complex hardware to assist. Whereas for this risk, the instruction set is more complicated, but the hardware normally is not so so intensive, okay, it's a uh, very uh, simplified hardware. So you will need to do more programming inside the reduced instruction set. But nevertheless, uh, today's uh, lecture is just to introduce you that for the instruction sets, for the CPU to process instruction sets, there are two main formats, which is the RIS and the SIS, all right? So uh, next, next slide. Okay, uh, some of you, I think for B-type people, you might be very familiar with Java and C, but uh, let me tell you that most of the microcontrollers today in the market are actually using C, all right? Very rarely you will find uh, microcontrollers that use Python or Java or whatever, but uh, recently there is, uh, there is a search uh, in, uh, in interest of using uh, Python to program uh, microcontrollers, uh, but, it's basically done uh, uh, to, to promote the Python as a multi-purpose language. Okay? You can use it for deep learning, you can use it for whatever reasons. So Python is uh, trying to move in that direction. But uh, 
in, in its uh, most of the uh, companies like Texas Instrument, Microchip, or even the uh, Arduino. Arduino, uh, if you really look at the IDE, it's a form of uh, C programming. Okay, it's a simplified form of C programming. Nevertheless, uh, it's a form of C programming. Now, I've never encountered any microcontrollers that use Java. Uh, if you have encountered and you want to try, you, you feel that there's something that I should know, please let me know. Uh, so far, I've never encountered anything that uses Java because uh, C, it's uh, very convenient for microcontroller programming. Uh, it's been used since day one, uh, C. Uh, C or C++, both are basically used for uh, microcontrollers. If you really look at uh, Arduino, for example, Arduino uses uh, C++. Most of the stuff that you use are uh, C level, but uh, Arduino also has object oriented when you come to designing libraries, okay? But uh, I don't think you will go to that level, designing libraries, but if you do uh, design libraries, uh, you will need to use C++ concepts. So Arduino and Mel, they can use uh, C++ concepts uh, for, to design the libraries, uh, but most of the stuff that you'll be using is just C. Uh, you know, for loops, while loops, all those very basic stuff uh, you'll be using. Uh, I hope that uh, you take this opportunity to uh, revise back on your C programming. For those who suffer in C programming, uh, I do not know why B-type people like to use Java. Uh, but uh, most of this uh, uh, embedded system, it's good to learn C, okay? Texas Instrument uses C, uh, Arduino uses C, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of embedded system programming IDEs actually use C. All right, so uh, that's enough. We will cover a bit more on C, uh, probably two or three lectures subsequently. Okay, can we move on to the next slide, uh, Dr. Hubert? Okay. Um, so uh, hardware model, uh, basically uh, this, this chapter we will cover more in depth in the future, but I think as I was speaking from the uh, previous slide, uh, interfacing with the outside world, you need IO, IO interface. So there are a lot of pin extruding from the board. These pins are for you to interface with outside world. Without uh, interfacing with the outside world, embedded system uh, has no purpose, okay? So your embedded system, there are a lot of pins extruding. These pins are basically to communicate with uh, uh, sensors, to communicate with uh, motors, and so on and so forth. So you need I/O to interface with the uh, the outside world. Okay. So we will cover this uh, briefly, uh, maybe two two or three lectures. How do we use uh, microcontroller to control outside outside stuff like, for example, motor and so on and so forth? We will cover in that. Uh, in the subsequent lecture, so do not worry. Uh, I've I've uh, taught this unit for about three years. Uh, it seems that a lot of B type people are very worried when we mention hardware. Okay, so B type people normally they say, "Hey, sir, why is this uh, hardware?" And all that. do not worry. Uh, if you get your basics, your C programming strong, basically you can control anything. Okay, so uh, learn a bit about the hardware model. We will do this. Uh, next slide. Okay, programming model is basically uh, uh, you uh, you will cover a bit about the addressing modes. Uh, just now we mentioned, okay, you want to do something to the register. There are a lot of ways to actually address register number one and register number two. Uh, the this memory, that memory. There are a few ways to do it, okay. Uh, and uh, these are what we call the addressing modes. Now these are things that will come into play uh, for exams. Okay, they will ask you. Uh, okay, uh, this instruction, can you can you do this instruction in another addressing mode? Let's say, for example, immediate addressing mode. Can you change this uh, instruction to immediate addressing mode? So if you can do it, you get two points. If you cannot do it, you lose your points. So addressing mode is also very complicated. I hope that uh, you pay attention during that, uh, that session of uh, lecture. Uh, when... Usually when a micro is in the instruction. Okay, this is nothing much, okay? Don't get yourself confused. Just bear in mind that uh, on the programming side, uh, you have addressing modes, you have memory map, execution, and all these kind of things. Uh, we will cover that in depth. You don't have to worry. Just uh, you follow the lectures, uh, that will be fine. I'll be also introducing a book where you can actually do some reading. There is an ebook. I think I'll post it on the Moodle. 
uh, this ebook is uh, available for you. Uh, the, uh, whatever that we covered is basically more or less from the ebook. Uh, I think I will post it on the uh, Moodle. Okay, next uh, slide. Okay, I think uh, that's about it for today. Uh, I hope that you bear with me. I think this is the uh, first time I'm using this uh, Ultra Collaborate. And uh, I just really like to uh, uh, say thank you to Dr. Gilbert. I think without him joining these uh, sessions, uh, I would actually have to uh, have to do a lot of things on my own. Uh, he, he's more familiar. And uh, i just like to uh, uh, thank him for his assistance. Uh, Again, uh, Dr. Fieber will be doing the labs, uh, his experience in this area, uh, uh, the programming side and all this. I hope you, you bear with us. And uh, that's it for today's lecture. Uh, any question, send me an email. Any confusion, you send me an email. Uh, at the moment, uh, the labs for me, we, we will do a bit of modification as compared to your Bentley side because circumstances are different. Okay, so I hope you bear with us. But uh, lab report and final exam is fixed. We follow Bentley. Only uh, the one of the lab elements uh, is called in lab. Okay, in lab, uh, uh, this component we would have to do it our way, the beauty way. So please bear with us. Uh, again, anything, please email me. Anything that you're not clear, uh, why is this ultra collaborate so difficult to use and all this? Uh, please email me. We will try to solve your problem. I will record, I will put this recording on a shared folder and uh, you can access this uh, shared folder, uh, download it or use it uh, for your, for your uh, revision and so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, that's all. Thanks for uh, bearing with us and thanks for joining our first lecture. Uh, okay, I think that's it. Uh, see you again uh, next week. Uh, remember uh, tutorials, uh, will be on second week, uh, lab will be on the third week. All right. So, uh, thank you. Thank you all. See you.